Hello everyone, a long video here. I thought I'd go through some defensive fortifications in this video. Specifically, I'm going to view this row of defensive fortifications here, spanning the P47 road, which leads down to Crimea. I picked this as Russia clearly expects the Ukrainian push to come this way, given the number of defensive works visible on Sentinel-2 satellites. The final one, Novo Troitska, is newly added to this map and credit to Twitter user Skillint for putting together the graphic I've used when we get to that one at the end. This video is going to be extremely map and satellite heavy. So let's begin starting with the first network, which is on the outskirts of Kokovka. The top of the screen is always north. I don't want to clutter the image, so I won't be adding a compass marker to the images. Just remember, top is north. These defensive works were along a fork in the road. The road branching east and one continuing southeast towards Crimea. There's an anti tank trench at the top. This looks to be unfinished. I believe this will also be built on the other side of the road, too. Not visible are the Dragon's Teeth pyramids. These are likely to be here, too, but don't show up in the satellite image. We've seen in past videos that Russia's typical layout is a double row of pyramids, a trench, then a double row of pyramids behind them. So that's likely true here. Then we see a large jagged trench for infantry. This surrounds the fork in the road in a rough semicircle. We may also notice it extending northwards on the western side, perhaps the start of one along that side of the road, perhaps even incorporating the AT trench. In the centre is a cluster of dug-in positions. These aren't located defending the town, unlike some which we will see. So I expect this is a possible troop billeting area where they'd sleep, rest, take lunch, that sort of thing. At the rear are more networks of trenches. This entire fork in the road is well defended, and other than Kokovka itself would be the first point of contest if Ukraine did decide to push in this direction towards Crimea. This is larger than it looks. As seen here, it's 1.11 kilometres roughly from end to end. Let's move on to trench number two. That will be this one here. Now before we look at the trench, the lines marked with red crosses are not trenches. These appear on Google Maps, they're just dirt roads. Here we can see a large semicircular AT trench. Again, expect there to be some dragon's teeth pyramids here too. This one is centered around a canal. No infantry trenches are visible yet, but there are two lines which appear to be trenches in the middle of being dug. These are quite straight and short at the moment, but if these are indeed trenches, I expect they will be expanded. There's also a lot of disturbed earth south of the bridge. These don't look like trenches, so I'm quite curious about them. A sign of landmines being buried perhaps, or maybe the start of the construction of a larger network. Being on the southern side of the canal, this is a good defensive position if the bridge is removed, the canal making a natural barrier. At the southern part, we can see two more trenches being dug. This network of trenches, as shown here, 1.2 kilometers from end to end. So again, pretty sizable. Let's move on to the next trench. This one highlighted here. Again, this is where the road branches into two. A road leading east and the main P47 road heading south. This guards basically the two entrances to a town called Petropavlivka so it's protecting the town. As always, and you'll have noticed, this is a common theme for Russian defensive works. There's a large AT trench first, this one in a semicircle, but well, some which we'll see are just in a straight line. This position is still under construction. We can see an incomplete defensive trench on the east side of the road. There's also faint signs that one is being dug on the west side too. Further south, a large complex of trenches, Possibly a second line of infantry trenches and billets for the troops. Though, with this one being near a town, I expect most of the troops would be using houses there. There are also a few square dug in positions which look like they could be used for vehicles. It's too hard to say for sure given the quality of a satellite image, but it's possible. Perhaps not howitzers, they are laid out a bit higgledy piggledy, rather than the usual typical straight, uniform firing lines that we see. 
could be for protection for BMPs or MTLBs based here. This is smaller and more tight knit than others we've seen, 653 meters end to end. Here is the fourth defensive network we will look at, near Prostora, highlighted here. This is very close to where we've just been. Petro Pavlivka is to the north, Prostora, very close to the west. There isn't really much to discuss for this one. This is just a roughly 900 meter plus AT trench constructed so far. I expect an AT trench to be built on the other side too. South of the AT trench is a road. It does look like this trench is dug along the side, but it isn't, it's just trees. East of the road is disturbed earth. It looks too thick to be a trench. It's possible some digging has been going on here, earth removed for some sort of construction purposes. It could even be the remains of farm work that occurred before February. Not much to discuss about this one, as there's not much here. Let's move on to this one, pointed out here. Here, the bit highlighted in blue is not defensive works. These ditches show on Google Maps too, so these are of no importance. Here is what we're looking at, shown now. Here are what I think to be vehicle trenches. It's a small trench heading west slightly and then branching north. But into space along it are small square positions which look like they are meant to hold vehicles. It's too hard to say for certain given the quality of the image. But we could be looking at an artillery firing position here. Though I would expect an artillery trench to be more in a straight line, the howitzers all orientated to face along the main road. Here, they would be sideways onto the road, though of course, howitzers can rotate their guns. These could also be positions for infantry fighting vehicles, store some of them here ready to head north to Petropavlivka if needs be. But I definitely think this is a vehicle area, could even be a SAM emplacement. Just south of it is a Z carved into the ground, whether by accident or design. It could just be coincidence, or it could just be that Russia has made it deliberate. It wouldn't be the first time, they did the same on Snake Island if you'll remember. Trench number 6 is here, Zauzerna. This, as we can see now, is a small cluster of infantry trenches. These are south of a bridge over a canal. So once the bridge is gone, this is a good natural defensive position. No AT trench can be seen here. I suppose the canal is considered to be enough to stop tanks if the bridge is removed. Given the canal is a natural barrier, this is a good defensive position. There's also larger square shaped positions amongst the trench which is likely for vehicles. I would say this area may be a tough nut to crack given the bridge. But, and here is a key point, we've seen that once the front lines crumble, so do the rest. We saw that in Kharkiv and we saw that in Kherson. Once the first front line collapsed, so did every position to the rear. Though granted, the front line itself does tend to hold okay for a while. It took a few months for the Hurson front line to collapse, much aided by HIMARS. So it is possible that if the front line collapses here, all these positions are just abandoned, with them pulling back to Crimea and defensive positions there instead. This trench is just south of a small town. It's by no means as extensive as some that we've seen. On the western side of the canal is an anti tank trench, spanning 1.21 kilometres or thereabouts. On the same side of the canal as it loops west, there's another small network of trenches. Interestingly, this looks like it could be intended for howitzers, as there are four dug-in positions, though it is hard to tell for sure. The next trench is here, and we're nearing the end now for this video. One more to go after this. This one, seen here, is located in the middle of three towns, so it's no surprise that this is quite an extensive network of trenches. First we have the AT trench ringing the road quite long at roughly 2.7 kilometers. This one, the images aren't as clear, but you can see four or five dark spots in the center in this central network of trenches. These could be deeper holes for vehicles to go. They could also possibly be temporary structures. Unfortunately, it's too hard to tell for sure, but this network is safeguarding these three towns. I expect more infantry trenches will be built here to increase its size. Now, the final trench. This one was shared today by Skillint on Twitter. As you can see, it's quite extensive. 
the trenches span east to west along the P47 road, just on the outskirts of a town called Novo Troitska. There are three main there are three main layers. A row of anti-tank trenches at the northern bit, again, expect there to be dragon's teeth here too. Then below that is a row of jagged trenches, which also extend backwards in various sections, possibly larger areas for troops to go. Then, another infantry trench. This one is hard to make out, but it looks like it connects to the central trench. Then, extending from the bottom trench, there's a new segment which features some vehicle trenches possibly for howitzers to go, or even infantry fighting vehicles. In the town itself we can see holes with disturbed earth and high activity in vehicles. There are five of these in general, could be a mixture of uses, where the excavating and engineering work is carried out, the local town's headquarters, ammo dumps, troop billets, though the creator of the map, Skill Int, suggests that the troops live in houses in the town which could make sense, keeping troops all in one large, obvious, industrial building, is just asking for a visit from Mr. Hymars. South of the town, it says increased activity in a junkyard. Whether this means some scrap vehicles have been dragged there, or Russia is using this as a vehicle storage, I don't know. We have seen photos earlier in the war, but Russia did place book launchers among junkyards. They are quite good hiding places. Moving east, we can see some roadblocks guarding the east entrance, but no clear trenches on the route heading into Novo Troitska. But there is a new trench complex just south of the roadblocks, at the entrance to Oleksandrivka. I expect this complex may be extended north, covering the entire entrance into Oleksandrivka itself, so it's quite an extensive network of trenches. Turning back to my original map, you can see that this row I have looked at is all along the P47 road which eventually leads into the eastern entrance into Crimea. Now there do look to be some weak links in the network. You may notice Chaplinka, for instance, seems bare. It could just be that the trenches there don't show up on Sentinel-2. That could be from too much cloud cover, lower quality images, or even the trenches being built under tree lines and other cover. So I wouldn't read too much into a push towards Chaplinka being easier, just because there isn't sign of these large trench networks visible. So that's it for this video. Thanks for sticking with me so far. If you found it interesting, please click like and subscribe. I'd appreciate it. Thanks again and take care everybody.